Beth Harmon's top five moves. Who is Beth Harmon? She is the star of the Netflix show Queen's Gambit. Make sure you go and take a look at it. It's absolutely brilliant. Now from one ginger to another, we're gonna go and take a look at those moves. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. This first example is taken quite early on in the show where she's playing, should we say, the kind of guy she fancies, who is Towns, this gentleman scholar of a chess player. And this is supposed to be taken from the 1963 Kentucky State Championships. And here Towns grabs the pawn, rook takes h6. A really bad move, a very greedy move. And that move is punished. How did Beth now squeeze the rook, squeeze, squeeze that rook until it had no squares to go to? First she plays king g7. That rook can only move to h5. Had the rook moved to h4, knight to f3 check forks the king and the rook leading to a winning position so rook to h5 is now met by king to g6 this shows the power of having a knight in the center of the board the rook tries to escape over to a5 where it looks like it may be safe but oh no those knights are tricky little guys and knight to b3 picks up the rook with a winning game well done beth you may be on your way to greatness. This second example taken from her last round in the Kentucky State Championships in the series, this was based in 1963 and propelled her on her way to further success. The game is actually taken from the legendary attacking player Nets Medinov and his encounter against Kasparion from Riga 1955. Well done to the research of the show. They've done a fantastic job. And in this position, the game continued with black checking. But now, after knight g6, the fireworks start. Glowing like the colour of her hair, rook to f7. Whew, in we go with a very powerful check. The king steps forwards. Can you calculate the finish here? Queen takes g6 check. The point of this move is the remaining three pieces now combine in a devastating attack. Normally three pieces is the winning formula when attacking your enemy's king. Rook to f6 check, rook to g5, and the checks keep on coming. And after this move, is there any way to win? Does Beth want to draw? She doesn't seem like the kind of player who wants to draw. Rook h5 check, king g7, rook g5, and after the king moves to h7, the final piece lands with checkmate bishop to f5. Kentucky State Champion, here I am. This next example taken from one of my favorite scenes from the whole series. And in this scene, she's playing in Mexico City three years later on in her career. She's playing a young Russian prodigy who seems like a very nice chap. I have to say a lot of the people in the series seem a lot nicer than some chess players I've faced. And here she seals the winning move. What is the move that Beth now sealed? In this position which is very hard to win an actual an improvement on a real life game which was dmitry yakovenko of russia very strong grandmaster versus daniel stellwagen which occurred in the wimbledon of chess wakanzi in 2007. pawn to h5 this is the winning breakthrough beth's idea is to get a pawn to g6 where she can support rook h7 checkmate now, black's best continuation here is something like rook to e2 and now a4, giving the king the a3 square, which it can sneak itself onto after rook takes b2 check, the king now perfectly safe. Black's best defensive try is h takes g5, and after h takes g6, we see the point, rook h7 is what we call a rather juicy threat. Juicy! Black has to try rook h2, but now the hoover can come. Let's hoover up those pawns, boys. G4, rook takes a7, and if g3, Beth can simply swap off the rooks, and this position is easily winning because the a and b pawn will storm down the board, gaining a queen. The next puzzle that I'm going to give you guys is Beth when she was sitting in Benny's apartment with a number of the strongest American players at the time. 
She was given this position by those players in an attempt to maybe try to trick her out or find how strong she actually was. It's white to play and win. Can you do a Beth and find the move that some of the players in the scene struggle to find? And do pause if you need to. Of course, Beth just slides out the move. King d7. I am the queen of the chessboard. And this is a brilliant move which stuns the players around her. The point of this is that the knight is now going to sneak its way around, mainly to the e8 square. If black tries bishop g7, the knight comes to d6. Next move, it floats elegantly into e8, delivering checkmate. If the king tries to run away, knight d6 is the winning move again. If the king goes to f8 here, there's knight to e6. Oh yeah, nice checkmate. If the king steps back, knight to e8 again and the last move king to h6 i'll let you guys discuss and solve in the comments below now the last best sequence was her shall we say brilliant game at the end of the series against the russian player borgov it was held in moscow in the series in 1968 the game is actually based on a game of Ivanchuk's against patrick wolf where Beth now improves on a Vanchuk's play with knight to e6, a much more direct move aiming straight for the black king. The game continued, rook a4, a very critical game to decide who is gonna become champion of this Moscow tournament in the series. Borgov playing very aggressively, but rook takes e4. Beth continuing to march forward, now gaining a seriously strong e-pawn. That e-pawn goes on, and around here in the series, they decide to adjudicate in what is a critical and very dynamic position. The real critical moment, though, appears later on when Beth gets in with a check and after King H8, Borgoff, realizing what destiny might have for him, offers a draw. Draw? Beth thinks about a decision. A draw would give her first equal, but she proves how brave she is by finding the winning idea. Can you find her winning move in this position? Rook is quite strong here. Anything to do with that? No, queen takes f6. Oh yeah! The idea is to get the rook on f1 into f8. Borgoff starts to sweat a little bit. Pawn takes f6, rook takes f6. And now one last roll of the dice, queen h5 hoping for some perpetual. Beth keeps her call, rook to f8 check, e8 queen, the queen queens and becomes the queen. Now rook e2 check, again going for some perpetual check ideas, king to f1 and Beth's queen slides away in very good manner with king b2, the king can't be checked and Borgoff resigns like a gentleman much more gentleman-like than I've seen some people resigning. Beth becomes the champion, and if you haven't seen it, do go and watch it. Do go and watch it. I hope I haven't ruined it too much for you. You should have seen it already. If you haven't, it's your own fault. What can I say? The Queen's Gambit really is a pleasure to watch. I'm assuming you've watched it by now. If you haven't, go and skive off work for a couple of days. Get Netflix on, get your you know, choc hot chocolate out, sit there and just enjoy. It's got its up and downs, but it is really just a brilliant piece of artwork, I'd say. And the acting is fantastic. I love everything about it. And I really hope we're gonna see stronger female players like Beth appear in the chess scene in the future. Do like and subscribe to this channel and hopefully we'll be back with more Beth-like action in the future.